אני, והשיעור, היהדות בהורות, ראש חודש, חשוון, and I named that, or the title of the שיעור is collecting wind, או in Hebrew, אוספת רוח. Before we start, I want to thank Allah for opening her house and her table with a bounty of things for us. Uh, and I want to bless you that uh, your house will always have the ability to entertain Amen. and to have Amen. people over Amen. and Amen. to put so much um, richness on your table. Amen. And uh, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity to gather everybody. So actually I named the shiur at the beginning gathered, but then somebody told me this is not English. So I, I, I have a problem with English, it's not Hebrew. So... <laughs> In Hebrew, I would say asufa, but it doesn't. Uh, so we are gathered around the table, but this is not what uh, I meant. Just uh, play them. Okay, so we are beginning uh, from Bereshit. We are starting all over again, and um, we, we started last week Parashat Bereshit. This week is going Parashat Noach, and uh, today Rosh Chodesh Cheshvan. Uh, a new year for us, and today it's actually Rosh Chodesh Cheshvan. And it, it looks like there's nothing in this uh, month. There's no holidays, no special uh, dates, uh, nothing really, like empty. And it, um, a very um, big contrast to Tishrei that was so full and so dense with events and, and holidays and stuff and... and spirituality and kedusha and so much and then we are moving to nothing doesn't make any sense that there's nothing here um, so we need to understand that this month even though it looks like there's nothing here the ability of the, this month to take us even higher is great and we're gonna try and understand how we're gonna do it Um, it's like when you're making a challah and you're taking all the materials of the dough and you mix them and then you have a dough and then you have to let it go and as if do nothing but it's not doing nothing there's something going on in the dough something is happening in the dough it fills with wind, with air, with, as if it's nothing, but it's not nothing. This is what makes the bread bread. Without it, it's going to be pita. It's not going to be challah. It's going to be something else. So there's, there's something to be said about letting go. Give something just to stand as it is and allow it to do what it needs to do. And so are we. We need to look at what we need to do right now in this month and a lot of it is letting go and taking a step back but by taking a step back sometimes it's even harder than doing something think about yourself when you're home and you have children going or your husband and you want to do something you want to say something you have something to say it's like on the tip of your tongue and you're holding back and you're choosing not to do anything sometimes it's harder than just you know open your mouth and say whatever you wanted to say and just get it over with so actually not doing something can be much harder than doing something with all your might so just to, something to have in mind um, so this month of uh, Cheshvan has the ability to connect heaven and earth. Whatever we did during Tishrei was very spiritual. Spiritual meaning high. We went to, to great heights. Um, and now we are landing on back to earth, back to daily life, back to routine, back to everything. But we have to take with us whatever we left, not, not leaving it over there, all the spirit, all the wind, we have to take it with us, to collect everything, take it with us, and do something with it now in the real life. 
And actually the, um, the job of connecting heaven and earth is the job of a Jew in the world. This is what we're supposed to do here in this world. I once, uh, we, we talked about it many times in previous Shiurim, uh, that the purpose of uh, Mahamad Har Sinai was uh, connecting the upper worlds with this lower world. There was a divider between the worlds and HaKadosh Baruch Hu took it away, this divider, and the connection was made. And our job over here is basically take whatever Kedushah that is in this world and allow it to go back up. When we blessed the food, we took the Kedushah from the food and we allowed it to go up. I, I don't want to sway too much away from, from Shi'ur, but um, the reason that there are foods that we are that we can eat and foods that we cannot eat is because the foods that we cannot eat, we just cannot take the Kedusha out of it and allow it to go up. That's why it's we're not allowed to eat it. Um, and the foods that we are allowed to eat, it's because we can, while we are blessing the food, we are allowing the, whatever Kedusha in it to go back up. We want, maybe we're going to do another shiur on that in a different time. So a lot of time we are looking at uh, other nations, other religion, religions, whatever, and um, um, it's very easy to sit on the top of a mountain all by yourself with your goats and do um and feel very special and, 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 and spiritual. But this is not a, a challenge. If you have no life to deal with, no real life to deal with, it's it's very easy to to sit and and be spiritual. The the trick or the challenge is how do we do that in this world, not in a in a place where we don't have to to do anything. We have to live and and we have to do stuff. And so this is basically um, our task, to work on our emotional, spiritual parts while or from living in the real world and doing real things, not in, in, in isolation someplace. <laughs> and actually this is what we started to do in on Shemini Atzeret. On Shmini Atzeret and Tfilat Musaf, we started to say, Meshiva Ruach u'morid ha'geshem. Before it was Morid Atal. And now we change to Meshiva Ruach u'morid ha'geshem. What does it mean, Meshiva Ruach u'morid ha'geshem? Bringing the wind and making the rain come down. This is what it means. Who does that? Who is moving the wind and bringing the rain down? Hashem, Hashem and we're going to see how. So, we're basically gathering everything we planted during Tishrei, Tishrei um, what, we, uh, what sprout on Rosh Hashanah, what uh, started to grow on Yom Kippur, and what bloomed on, on Sukkot. We're taking all of that, all the crops, all the things, we're gathering the fruits, the flowers, everything, and now we take the wind, which is the spiritual ruach, and make it rain, make it geshem. But geshem, it's not just rain in Hebrew. Geshem comes from the word gashmi, material. Remember the word? To materialize, I remember. You take something spirit, spiritual, you take wind, and you materialize materialize it and make it something that you can actually hold in your hand, something that is real. So we are talking about wind and rain, but the words ruach comes from the word ruchaniyut, meaning spiritual. And geshem, rain, but it's also material, right? So so we're taking the spiritual from the from Tishrei and we want to make it something concrete, something that you can hold, something that you can do something with it. So 
etc. Hashem is telling us, you need now to take something and take the potential in it and make it something real. It's not just in the air. It needs to come down to earth and, and become something real. Um, take your filot and make it, and ma materialize your filot. Make it something that you can do something with it. Create something with it. And for that, we got an entire month just to concentrate on that. A month with no interruptions at all. All we need to do is just concentrate on that. Take all this high energy, all this spiritual, and make out of it something. Make, make something out of it. Don't leave it over there as a wind. Take it. Do something with it. Um, and the way that we are going to do that um, is by talking. This is what we do. This is when we talk. There's wind coming out of our mouth, but the talk is something that I can give you. It's not you cannot touch it yet, but it can become something that is touchable. My words. It can be can become because if I'm using my words to make you feel better, then I made a change in your body. So I made a change in your material. Um, if I'm taking my words and I'm, I'm, I'm helping somebody, or you're helping somebody, so you're doing something with the wind, but you make it something that is, is, is physical and you can touch, actually touch, because you're touching somebody else with your words. So this is time for bettering yourself, bettering your environment, and, and taking whatever treasure you picked up and make, out, make something out of it. Uh, Baal Shem Tov um, said that in Tehillim it says, Karvan nafshi el geela, meaning my soul is nearing geula, so salvation. Um, my soul is getting near. And he's saying the same way that there's, there is and there's going to be uh, a general geula for entire Am Israel, there's also a private geula for each and every individual. And meaning that each and every one of us can step out of whatever is bothering or not okay in their life and create or materialize a private geula, a private salvation for yourself. So each and every one of us can take this month and make it meaningful, make something out of it from this month. So how can we say it? How, how can we do that? A Magid me the Kemnazites say this month Cheshvan actually his, the name in full is Mar Cheshvan and it says that it comes from the word Merachashot Sfataich meaning um, um, uh, Messiah Messiah is a synonym for talking so it's coming from the same root so and he's saying while your lips are still whispering, moving and whispering the wind of your, of your prayers, um, you can say that now, your, yeah, now your, the same lips are starting to ask to take this wind and make a rain out of it, make Geshem out of it from this rain. So it's, it's a month that you can make um, a big changes in, in each and everyone's uh, life, not just yours, but people that are around you as well, with your mouth, by talking. Um, a person can turn to Hashem and just speak from his heart or her heart and tell Hashem whatever is bothering you, whatever you need, whatever is missing in, you, in, in, your, in your life. I, I need to get married, I need children, I need Shlom Bayit, I need better Parnassa, I need health, I need peace of mind, I, whatever, whatever you need, I need Shlom Bayit, whatever you need, this is the time, now start talking, start, start moving your lips, this is the time for that. Um, and especially today, Rosh Chodesh, this is a very, very special day, you have the entire night tonight and the entire day tomorrow until sundown. Um, it, it, is, it says, the Baal Shem Tov is saying that it's good to make a big feast 
on uh, on this Rosh Chodesh, which we are doing, and um, to say the 15 uh, chapters in Tehillim that are start that are Shira Malot. It start with the word Shira Malot. There are 15 of them. It's uh, starting in uh, 120 until 134. These are 15 uh, Mizmurim Shira Malot. Maala is the virtue, and Maala is also a step. So it's basically when you're saying Shira Malot, you are you're taking yourself a step up, and another step up, and another step up. Um, the Leviim in Beta Mikdash they used to say each of these Shira Maalot when they were climbing to go into Bet HaMikdash. They saw Maalot are steps, and you are Ole, you are climbing up, and each and every step they used to say another Mizmor. So, saying this uh, 15 Mizmorim, during, you can say it at night, uh, or during the day, light a candle, put a few coins in Tzedakah, say what Say those uh, 15 uh, chapters, it's not, you can say it in any language you want, it doesn't have to be in Hebrew. And then talk to Hashem from your heart, ask whatever you need, it, in your own words, use your lips, move your lips. Do we have to light a candle? No. Okay. You don't have a candle at home. I do like it. I actually, it's um, it's a custom to light a candle every Rosh Chodesh. Just that you know, it's it's a custom. You don't yeah, have one to. One or like just one, like like you yeah, like you light in uh, near the Shema, but one. You should add it to just have a table of candles. Not now. No, yeah, you, we can. I I actually light at home before I come. I lighted yesterday and I light now another one. So it, it, it says about Shem Tov is saying that the reason that uh, this is a good time to ask anything from Hashem, it says because in this Rosh Chodesh, the private gates of the private geula of each and every person is, is uh, opening up. In, uh, this is what the Baal Shem Tov is, is saying. So in order for all the bounty that can come from above, that it will be able to come to me, I need to make myself a vessel. And in order to make myself a vessel, I need to do some kind of a change in me. And this is some kind of a change. You're doing something else, something you, you haven't done before. So this is from Nabal Teh Hashem Tov, I'm just giving it to you. So, um, we, we understand that uh, Hashem is waiting for our good words to come up to, to Him. So He can do that. And... Uh, he wants to lift us up. He wants to put us in a better place. And this is why, he's, this is why we, ha we have Noach. We have now Noach. Because he said, uh, Kadosh Baruch Hu is saying to Noach, Bo ata v'chol betcha el ha'tevach. Come you and all your house to the ark which is the Pshat. <laughs> but Teva in Hebrew is also a synonym for word. Just word. So, HaKadosh Baruch Hu basically is telling us, come into the Ark, come into the Teva. But what he really means is telling us, go into the words of the Tefillah. Dive into it. See what's inside discover what's in it because from there you can take so much from the Teva from the word itself there's so much inside of it this is what the Baal Shem Tov is saying boy la Teva come to the ark la Teva go in the letters of the Torah the letters of the prayer surround yourself in words and letters the holy words and letters of the Torah and the Tefillah and they will be the ark, the teva, that's going to save you from the mabul. How do you say mabul in English? Flood. 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 Flood.
um, we're talking about something that is making your life difficult, something that is bothering you, something that is disturbing you in your life. So Abal Shem Tov says, if you're going to go into the word, into the teva, into the words of the tefillah, into the words of the Torah, surround yourself with it, you're going to be um, protected and you're going to be um, helped. You're going to find the help you need to save you from the flood, from your private flood. This is what the Baal Shem Tov is saying. So we are learning from that that, that that praying, even in your own words, it's the best talk that you can have because you are materializing something spiritual now, right? There's a verse in uh, Tehilim, I don't remember which uh, chapter, it says, Shishim uh, Giburim um, Shlomo. I don't remember exactly. It says uh, 60 uh, heroes that Melech uh, Shlomo has, something. And when you read the, the perush for this verse, it says that the 60 uh, heroes are basically 60 letters uh, of the Birkat HaKohanim. It has 60 letters in it. Barcha Adonai Vishmarecha, Yer Adonai Panav Elecha Vichuneka, Isa Adonai Panav Elecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom. It's exactly 60 letters. So the perush, when you're reading it, it says, basically, the, the guardians of Shlomo HaMelech that he surrounded himself with was this bracha. The, so we also see how Shlomo HaMelech himself took tevo, the tevot, the teva, and surrounded himself with it. So he can be protected at night. Um, so this is something that we bless our children on Arab Shabbat, after, in the middle of the Kiddush, between the wine and the challah. We are blessing our children, and if you're not blessing, start doing it, because it's great, uh, this blessing. And again, I'm telling you, I'm the only one that is religious at home. My kids are grown, and even though they are allowing me to do that, because um, when you bless your child, you have you got to look in their eyes. You have to. You can bless and not look. So whatever happened before in the week, Whatever happened during Yom Shishi, when you were cooking or arranging the home, whatever, uh, I don't know, fights or... Um, well, whatever, arguments, um, angry feelings, frustration, mm, all of that, it, it just goes away when you stand in front of your child, your hands on their head, and you're looking in their eyes. You can't be mad anymore. That's it. You just can't. So it brings so much love into the into your life. And again, you're you're talking. You're saying you, you're saying words of 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 of, tfila, of of Torah, and it's beautiful. So you you're getting strength from it, and you're giving strength with it to to your child. She's right, by the way. It's flood. The translation is flood. Flood. Okay. And when you when you when you translate it, and the translator it says storm, but then it says flood. It's weird. Mm. Or it's just very strange. But yeah. So, um, uh, uh, Rabbi Milubavitch is saying, even when you open your eyes in the morning and you start by moda nilefanecha, you you're just beginning. Don't just blum, blum, blum. think about what you're saying. Think about it. What am I saying right now? And, and, and fill yourself with it because you're saying something so amazing. Molda ani lefanecha. I am standing here before you and I'm thanking you. Shenatata bi, that you put in me, nishmati, my soul, bechemla, with mercy. Rabbi Munatecha, your faith in me is so great. Right? So, or just on this we can talk so much because there's three people in this Pasuk. And they're all you. Ani, Bi, Nishmati. Three. Three times I'm talking about myself. There's a lot to talk about it sometime, some, uh, sometime else we're going to do that. But think about it when you're talking. Because sometimes you have conversations with yourself and you don't understand who is talking with you. <laughs> so it's there. The okay. So it's also going to give you the recognition of 
who is in charge. You're reminding yourself who is in charge, and it takes a lot away from the um, stress of it's my responsibility, and and it's because of me, and I did that, or I'm doing that, or if I'm not going to do that correctly, it's my fault that it happened. We usually don't take so much credit, but we know how to blame ourselves really, really well. So just take this um, sting away from yourself. You're not in charge. You can do whatever you want to do, but there's somebody else that decides what's going to happen exactly. So when you are going into the Tevot, the words of the Torah and the Tefillah, and you're looking at them, you're getting a, a strength and ability to overcome all the hustles of the daily life, all your floods, right? This is the Rabbi Lubavitch saying, and uh, 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 the same way Hashem saved Noah, He can save you, each and every one of you, each and every day from, from the flood. So let's try and understand the words of this uh, new uh, blessing that we are saying since uh, Shemini Atzeret, Meshiv Aruach Umurid Ageshem. It says in uh, the Gemara, Gadol Yom Agshamim Keyom Shenitna Botorah. Days of rains are as big as the day when the Torah was given. It's a very big statement. That the days, or the day where it, when it rains, is as mi- miraculous as the day of Muhammad Har Sinai. And it sounds a little iffy, like really, it rains all the time. How is that compared to Muhammad Ar Sinai at all? What is the Gemara telling us exactly? And how come they're coming with such a declaration that looks like, really? You really mean it? It's really the same? When it's raining and you're getting wet and all muddy and you know, and it's, it's that uh, amazing as Muhammad Ar Sinai? So let's see. Um, the fact that it rains often doesn't make the rain less miraculous. It's just that we got used to it. The same way as the people that lived in uh, the generation of the desert, for them, the man wasn't miraculous. It was something that they grew up to. It's, it's a regular event. You come in, you get up in the morning, and you have man. Just imagine, we are going to go outside and you have bags of, uh, of I don't know, shalva coming from, from the sky. <laughs> Popcorn coming from the sky. And I don't know, it, it's going to look like it's a miracle that it's happening. But for the generation of the desert, it was a regular day. For us, a rainy day is a regular day. It rains all the time. It's not a special phenomenon. So we understand that a miracle doesn't seem to us as a miracle when it happens every day. But it doesn't mean that it does, it's not a miracle. The fact that it happens every day doesn't take any, any of this greatness of the, of the miracle. So what is so great about rain that is being compared to Muhammad Ar Sinai? Arav Avigdor Miller, Zechono Livracha, saying that the purpose of the rain is to help us know Hashem, Ladat et Hashem. It's not about believing, it's not about faith, it's about knowing. It's about um, getting familiar with something, with Hashem, and know Him the way we know other people, the way as if we know other people. He basically telling us, um, knowing Hashem, or working Hashem, it's not about how good of a believer you are, or how strong is your faith. It's the more you know Hashem, the more it's obvious to, to you that is, it's clear that He's here, you know, you know it in all your might. It's not about emuna. you know that it's here then you are closer to, to, to Hashem. So it, it, it is a miracle. So he said the rain is Ladat et Hashem, to know Hashem, to get familiar with Him. 
He said, that's why you have to be very happy with every drop of rain that's falling from the sky. Because rain's supposed to make you happy. It's supposed to. Mm. He says, every drop is a pearl. It's a, a diamond. And he said, he's saying that we need to teach our children that it's a miracle. And when it's raining, call them and show them the pearls or the diamonds on the window or the drops of the of the water of the rain when you see it on a, on a branch of a of a tree sometimes it it actually looks like diamond from afar especially to me that I don't see well from far so when I'm without glasses it really looks like diamonds like as if all the trees are being um, um, sparkled. Yeah, like somebody sparkled everything with diamonds. Mm -hmm. It actually, it, it, it's shiny and it's like, it's like, um, Listening. yeah, it, it's amazing. It's sometimes it's nice not to see well because you see, <laughs> <laughs> you, you see stuff that you don't see uh, when, you're, when you, when you have good uh, sight. So you can see them on, on the, on the leaves, on the, on the branches, on, on the windows. It, it's amazing. So get amazed. Don't don't look at the rain as if it's oh okay it's raining, uh -huh. it's uncomfortable. It's raining. Look at it as as what it is. It's a miracle, and we want to see how it's a miracle. So we say it's raining, as if the rain by itself is raining. It, it com comes down, but it doesn't. There's um, um, an artistry of Hashem that makes it happen, and and we want to see how. We're going to go back to elementary school and remember the cycle of the rain. Let's see the cycle of the rain. So we already learned it, but let's learn it again in a, in a different way, from, a, from eyes of, of, of a muna, of, of a Jew. So rain is a phenomenon that requires a lot of forces of nature to work harmoniously together. So, in order for the rain to come down from the sky, it first needs to go up, right? So, how does this happen? The energy of the sun is uh, warming the face of the earth and causing the water to evaporate, right? So, tons and tons of waters going up from earth in the forms of vapor and becomes clouds. Right? Mm -hmm. But what good it is when you have tons of clouds above the ocean where the water was warm? What good is it going to do? The rain is going to fall back into the ocean. The ocean can grow trees. The ocean can grow vegetables. The ocean can grow, I don't know, life. It can't. It's just, I mean, fish, yes, but, but you know, for us. It does nothing. The, the clouds need to somehow move from the oceans where it was formed above the ocean and come inland. has to. So, Hashem, it says in Tehilim, Osem al achav ruchot, meaning he makes his uh, angels or messengers winds. What it means, there are special winds that pushes this enormous mass of vapors from above the oceans into the land, onto the land. I remember once, you know, if you ever been in Israel or looked at the map of how Israel looks, you see it's like a strip, like you have the Mediterranean Sea and then Israel and then everything else. Mm -hmm. So I remember we were um, driving um, on a road um, f that is like parallel to Jordan and then you're going a little up so you are going a little bit to Syria and then you're going left and you're down by Lebanon. So it's, it's like, I don't think today you can ride over there. I think today it's just the army is there. But back then we could have do it. And I remember that I, I saw the clouds be coming from the sea and I'm like, stop, stop, stop. I, I, wanted, I wanted rain. And then they moved to Jordan and I can see them. 
give water to Jordan and we are staying dry. It was like unbelievable because it's like it's nothing. It's a strip of, of nothing. It's like if you're driving straight, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes of drive. It's nothing from where we've been, which is the border to the Mediterranean, where we was. It's maybe 15, uh, 15 minutes of, of drive. If, if there was a straight uh, road going from there to there, it's nothing. It's like from here to Gormaglat, it's nothing. <laughs> and I see the clouds coming, and I'm like, yeah, it's going to rain, and then it goes to Jordan. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> so, again, when you, when you live in a country where you don't have a lot of rain, so you, you wish for rain, and you wait for the rain, and you appreciate the rain differently, because where is the rain? Kinneret level is going down, we don't have water, we have to save. We need the rain, and then it goes to Jordan. I mean, to the Arabs, really? Like, you give them to them? To them? No. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 it was many years ago, and I can't forget it. I just can't forget it. It was, like, unbelievable to me. How come you push the... the, the all the, the the clouds over there. They don't need it. But now already more Israel, right? I don't know. I haven't been there in a very long time, since 2019, so I cannot tell you. Uh, maybe this year, but after I'm going to go again. So, um, the special winds that pushes those clouds inland, and and when the rain is pouring down on the earth, then it becomes something that we can do something with it. It becomes f uh, apples and pears and oranges and wheat and all the good stuff that we can eat. Um, so after Hashem is doing Meshiva Ruach, moving the, uh, the wind and letting the rain down, Morida Geshem is allowing the rain to come down, the clouds are... Um, condenses and the vapor became become water again becomes heavy and then they fall down to earth with force of nature that calls gravity what is gravity nobody knows I mean mathematics can write formulas and explain to you in numbers what it is but nobody knows what it is really who knows what it is who can explain exactly where it is where it's come from, how can you create something like... It's, it's just it's there. The it's magnetic it's center of the Earth or something? Yeah, yeah. I, I, again, we can... We, do you know that there's a mag magnet over there? Did we ever get there? We so don't know. Believe, you know? I have, a, <laughs> I, have a, I have a cousin, he's, um, he works in NASA. He's a, scient a NASA. scientist in NASA. Yeah, NASA. <laughs> and he is investigating the black hole. Mm. Years and years He's a professor in the university, and all he cares about is the black hole. And he, oh, and he even discovered um, a new, um, how do you say, like um, planets that does... Um, universe? Yeah, no, no, uh, no so, yes, no. something like that, like a, 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 a galaxy. A galaxy, oh. yeah, he discovered a galaxy. Oh. Wow. He and, and his um, partners discovered a new galaxy, which is oh. very far away. And he told us that they are over there in NASA still puzzled mm. because something in the calculation doesn't work. For what? Well, I'll tell you okay. what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. According to their calculation, the mass of Earth, as it is on, according to their calculation, could not have uh, stayed in its course. It's too light. It's too light. According to their calculation, the Earth is too light to stay in his, on its course. They don't know what makes it heavy enough to stay in its course. They, they just don't know. And I'm talking about NASA, black hole, and new galaxies. And they still don't know. So we know why it's heavy. Because we know that there's other worlds over there that they don't see. We don't see. And we know that there's water over there in the form of ice. And ice is heavy. Because we know that on the second day, Hashem separated the water, and He left over here water, and then He put water over there, up there. In Hebrew, there is Sham, and what's over there? Water. Water is Maim. 
שם מים. שמיים, שמיים. שמיים, the mud, the water, so we know it's there, we cannot see it. But as, as, uh, as Jews we know it's there. And we know that this is what makes earth so heavy. And, um, and in NASA they just, they, they, they just left it because the calculation doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So let's go back to, to our miraculous uh, rain. So we have to hold a second and ask, okay, so the water from the oceans evaporated into the clouds and Hashem pushed them with the um, winds and it's above the ground and now it's falling down, but what are we going to do with salty water? It came from the sea. But we know that when it comes down, it's not salty. What happened? Where is the salt? It's stayed in the sea. Yes. How? It's when it evaporates. How? <laughs> it's not just the salt. It's so sweet. It's so smart today. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's not just the salt. You know what's been pouring to the seas from us? What are we pouring into the sea? We're pouring uh, sewage. We're pouring chemicals. Uh, there are dead animals in the sea. There are dead animals on the ground. We are made of 70% water. So when, we, when we're going into the ground, all the water is also going into the ground. And from the ground, everything goes to the sea, you know. All the waters go to the sea, from the tops of the mountains, from the rivers, from the streams, from, the, from everywhere, from fruits that are lying on the ground and all the water is being soaked. So all these impurities, how come they are not in the water? How did that happen? You know, how the sun distills it. There is something in the sun's light and heat they distill the water, meaning that when the water are evaporating from the sea, only pure water is becoming vapor. All the impurities and all other substances stays down. Nothing dirty comes up in, in the forms of vapors. Only pure, pure water. So it's not just pure, pure water. It's the water the same water that was in Bereshit. Because we said it's a cycle, right? So it's the same water that was here at the beginning that keeps recycling themselves over and over again where it's not going anywhere. It's always here. We're using it, we're putting it back into the ground and into the sea. And then the sun comes and it becomes vapors and go back into the clouds and back coming down as rain, back into the ground, back to us, back to the, to the animals, back to the fruits, and from there, back to the, to the ground, and back to the water. It, everything stays. So basically we are, we are drinking second-hand water, <laughs> recycled water. We're drinking the same water Avraham Avinu drank. We're drinking the same water Sarai Menu drank. We're drinking the same water our ancestors drink. It's the same water. Just has been purified over and over and over again in a miraculous way. It's like, can you believe that? When you think about it, it's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. So every time it rains, you need to stand in awe and say, oh, it's the water from Bereshit coming down. It's this pure water, Veruach Elohim Erachefet Al Pnei Amayim. It was here, and, and it's back here. It's the same water. It's unbelievable. It's like, unbelievable. The, the, this rain that makes the entire world alive, and us, sustains us, was here all the time, the same water. And it comes back again and again and again. And they're always pure and sweet and amazing. Always clean never comes down as dirty, never. It might get dirty from pollution on the way down, but when they are coming down from the cloud, or in the cloud, they're pure, pure water. But there's more. 
But wait, there's more, it's like the... Gemara, in the Ketuvot, is detailing the benefits or the virtues of the rain. It says, Matar mashke marve umezabel, meaning it waters, it, um, uh, when you drink and you're, you're uh, satisfied, satiated is food. Quenches, 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 maybe I'll remember it. Quenches. And it fertilizes. This is what the Gemara is saying. Fertilizes. Really? Yeah. No, really, the rain fertilizes since when? Like the rain that comes down from the sky fertilizes. You yeah. don't need to go to the Home Depot and buy those bags with fertilizer, or back then put a goat in your yard and <laughs> let it just go. And <laughs> and your yard is your, your yard is going to be fertilized. How 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 can it fertilize the rain? If I'm going to the well and I'm gonna um, take water from the well, the water is fertilizing. No, it doesn't. So how come the rain that is? We're gonna see. Look, listen to this miracle. Above every square foot of earth or land and water, there's air, right? The air is um, made of what, right? We have 70% uh, nitrogen and about 25% oxygen. This is what we have in the air. And those two elements, when they come together, are perfect for fertilizing. No because it, it, when, when oxygen and, and nitrogen combine, it becomes um, nitrates. And nitrates is, is fertilized. This is the, uh, a chemical that can fertilize your land. However, um, nitrogen is um, by itself, or oxygen by itself, cannot fertilize. They have to come together in order to fertilize. However, um, nitrogen is an inert gas. He is a loner, and also very lazy, and he doesn't like to be together with anybody, and also he doesn't have the strength. Like, leave me alone. I'm heavy, leave me alone. However, oxygen is very friendly. Oxygen can, com can uh, attach itself to almost everything. But the nitrogen is not interested. So they're not coming together. So how come it becomes fertilized? Mm -hmm. Lightning. Oh my this God. is where lightning comes in. Oh when a lightning strikes the sky and go through the skies, it hits the air, and the enormous heat that it creates forces the nitrogen and the oxygen to combine. As they have no other choice but to combine. So the lightning is coming, the nitrogen and the oxygen combine, we get nitrates, and then rain is falling, and on its way, it, uh, the, the, the gases are um, solidified, no, not solidified, it's the gas, no, the, uh, mm, um, uh, like, pss, pss, I don't know, it, 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 it goes with the, I don't remember the word right now, but it's, um, um, it's like, it's like, Mitmoses. Yeah. Who mit 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 they, they bind together. No. no. Because of the opposite. Yeah, yeah, it's they, it's um. Like decompo not decomposite, but dissipate. Um, like, like when you take um alkazelzer and put in and you put in the water and it's. Oh. Sizzle. 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 It's like a fizz, but it's not. It's yeah. It, it, what's it, it, that it, thing called when you put in it? And it's. Like this, I don't know how, no, whatever. <laughs> this is what happens. Uh, so, what did your sister <laughs> dissolve? <laughs> dissolve. Oh, Thank oh, you very much. Oh, you yes. Dissolve. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, it dissolves into the water, and then the 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 drop of the rain falls into the 
earth and it fertilizes the earth. But only when there's lightning. Only when there's lightning. Only. But, not always. but usually there's lightning. You might not see them all the time because it can be very high. But there's the always the lightning. The because it, the, the, the clouds are always charged with electricity. So when there's clouds, they're bumping to each other and there's lightning. They, we might not see it. Usually we see the lightning and hear the thunder when the clouds are very low. But when they are high, you might not see or hear, but it's there. It, 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 it's, it's amazing. Is that one of the reasons that we say about the lightning? Mm -hmm. Because it's such a miraculous part of the whole cycle. It is. It is. It's unbelievable. Right. So, so when, so, so, <laughs> so, so we see why the Gemara is saying that the 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 rain is water, yes, quench, 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 and <laughs> fertilize. This is what the rain does. And the Gemara back then they already knew that. Where did they know it from? They didn't have chemistry labs. They didn't have. Um, microscope, they didn't have magnifying glasses, they didn't have ways to measure all of that. And they knew. Why they knew? Because we got the Torah from whoever made it. That's why. So you see how miraculous it is, it's unbelievable. So when the rain comes back to the earth after this cycle, now it replenished the earth. Now the earth that gave all its nutrients to the fruits and vegetables and animals and wh whoever and us that are sustained by, by its um, <coughs> crops of, of the earth, now it replenish. It gets all the nutrients back because it's being fertilized. It's, it's a huge miracle. It's all this cycle is unbelievable. Ecosystem. Yeah, but again, you can look at it as like very, you know, strip it out of all that there is and just describe it as a cycle. This is what happens. But then look at it really what's happening over here. Look really what's happening here. Okay, the sun is warming the water. The water becomes vapor. But it's not just that. All the impurities are left behind. It's distilled. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And the fact that it's water that are here from Bereshit, it's the same water over and over and over again, cycling. So now that you see the rain, you're going to look at it forever differently. Mm -hmm. That way the mikveh forever. has so much, yeah. so much yeah. power, I guess. Then because the, that's so why the mikveh has rainwater in it. It has rainwater in it, so you will never ever look at the rain dif um, um, the same way you did until now. And make sure to pass it on to your children. Let them know what's, what, what an amazing miracle is, is we're seeing. We're living like as if we're in the desert and we're getting man from the sky. Really. We're getting the water from Bereshit from the sky. We're getting pure water. It's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, this is what we're doing now. We are imagining that all our prayers of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippurim and Slichot of Elul, all of it, and, and Sukkot, the Shmini Atzeret, Simchat Torah, all these tefillot that we did is like the evaporating water from the sea into the clouds and now it stands above the sea and we need to do Meshiva Ruach Umurida Geshem we need to move it don't leave it over there in Tishrei don't leave it over there take it with you make rain out of it don't leave it above the ocean it's gonna go back into the ocean all your work is gonna all your work is gonna go back into where it came from it's like you did nothing you just you just lost air Take it with you. Move it. Blow wind on it. Pray. Say words. Take words out of your mouth and pray and move those clouds above your land and let it rain. Let it, let it materialize into something that you can do something with it, that you can benefit from, either yourself or other people around you. Am Israel, the world, whatever. 
And when we're talking about water, we need to remember that it says, um, uh, also in the Gemara, En ma'im ela Torah, meaning water is Torah. Mm-hmm. Why? The simple explanation is because the same way as water comes always pouring from a higher point to a lower point, the same way Torah came from a higher place to a lower place, mm-hmm. right? So, we just began the Torah anew. It's like receiving the Torah all over again. It's like as if Ma'amad Ar Sinai, as if it's new. And and as the same way as when we did the Ma'amad Ar Sinai and we're starting now Bereshit, it's almost the same. But this year is very special because this year is the eighth year meaning the eighth years after seven years of Shemitah. And the eighth year after seven years of Shemitah is called Shnat Hakel. Meaning, what is Hakel? Hakel comes from the word Kahal. Kahal is crowd. So Hakel, make a crowd. This is basically what it says. Make a crowd. The same way as Am Israel was a crowd standing at the foot of uh, Har Sinai and um, received the Torah, Every eighth year, after the seventh years of Shemitah, Am Israel used to come to Bet HaMikdash, and the king, whoever was the king, used to give the Torah again, meaning reading the entire Sefer Dvarim to, to the people, like giving them the Torah again. Meaning, okay, now we are taking this spirit, because there was a year that we did nothing with the earth, so now the eighth year is beginning, and I'm giving you the king the Torah again, here we are all together as if it's Ma'amad Ar Sinai, starting from, from anew, remember why we are here, and use this Torah now when you're going to plow, and seed, and work the land, and, and, and do your mundane daily routines. Take the Torah with you, don't leave it over there on the mountain, don't leave it in the clouds, take it with you to your daily life, use it, it's, it's, the Torah is for, for, the, for, for life. It's for the living. It's not for sitting on the mountain and doing, um, it's not. It's actually doing with it something. Bless, talk, say something, do something. So, this is, Mamad Har Sinai was the most spiritual thing ever that happened. There was no other big spiritual um, event other than Ma'amad Ar Sinai, ever. So every time that we're starting from Bereshit, we are reminded of standing there. So we are receiving now the Torah anew. We are choosing the Torah again. We are choosing it again. Now and in Shavuot, we're going to do it again. And Shnat Hel is like the third time in the year where we are going to. So we are now also doing Akhel. What we are doing right now is also we gathered and we are a crowd and a very big one. We didn't know that we thought we were going to have two and a half ladies and oh Hashem. <laughs> <laughs> so we are taking the spirit, the wind, we bring it up and we move it and we let it rain. And we, when once we let it rain, this is where the spirit, the wind becomes material. It becomes something that you can touch and you can hold. So we need to remember that the Torah is something that we need to use on our daily life. It's not separate from our daily life. It's not something we do and we live over there on the side and then we live. It's supposed to be a part of our life all the time. We're supposed to use it and make, make a use out of it. It says the Parashat Nitzavim, the Sefer Dvarim, the, 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 the last um, speech of Moshe Rabbeinu, when he's standing and talking to Am Israel, he's saying, Lo b'shamayim hi velo me'ever layam hi. He's talking about the Torah. It's not b'shamayim, it's not in the sky, and it's not beyond the seas. It's, it's here. Ki karov elecha adavar me'od, it is very, very close to you. Beficha uvil vavcha la'asoto, in your mouth and in your heart to do it. This is what it is. You need, you need to do something with it. Like doing, not leave it like this. 
So every time you're standing and praying, every time you're reading words, and, and you are inside the ark, inside the teva, inside the world, and you are now protected, like Shlomo HaMelech, with all the letters around you, and then you know Hashem. This is the only time that you can know Hashem, because now you know, because you feel it. You feel it, you understand it, you know it. It's not about believing, it's not about faith, it's about I know it, it's here. Because you understand the enormous miracle that you are, each and every one of you, of us, a huge miracle, and you understand the huge miracle that is this life and what we are doing here. So I would um, ask you now each to, I'm going to turn it off, and I'm uh, going to bless Chodesh Tov, I'm going to turn it off.